So a wonderfully huge good afternoon and a welcome to everybody. Welcome to this third Sharing 60 from Building People. And today we're focusing on the world of service leavers, veterans, the um, the world of ex-military. And our focus today is how to train and recruit from ex-military personnel, um, and specifically how to train and recruit into built environment careers. My name is Rebecca Lovelace. I'm the founder and chief dot joiner at Building People. I took the, um, the term dot joiner because it is a huge amount of just joining those dots across this really fragmented industry. It also makes people listen, so it's rather a useful job title to have. Um, I'm going to just explain a brief little bit about, little bit about building people, um, and then I'll just introduce you to our speakers. So really briefly, building people, we are a hub for equity, diversity and inclusion in the built environment. We bring together um, people and organizations with a very strong focus on equity, diversity, inclusion, enabling individuals to more easily access fragmented careers opportunities and for employers to widen their talent pool. Part of how we do this is through our network. We've now got a network of over 60 organizations, each focusing on specific audiences. And in previous Sharing 60s, we focused on youth and young people into the sector, refugees, and I'm really pleased. This one is particularly close to my heart. I've had some involvement with the ex-military world, really, I suppose, from the beginning of my thinking that we could all join these pieces together. So I'm, I'm really pleased to be focusing today on ex-military. I'm probably even more pleased to be able to introduce our wonderful speakers. Um, we're going to kick off with Build Force and then Career Forces and then Building Heroes. So just to introduce, we have Angela Forbes and Kathleen Cargill joining us from Build Force. You're allowed to do a quick wave. Um, and then we have Andy Howe from Career Forces. And last but by no means least, we have Karen Jefford from Building Heroes. And um, I am probably going to find it most sensible to stop talking now. We will have Q&A after a brief presentation from each organization. So each organization will talk about what they do, the opportunities they provide, the services they deliver, and how you can engage. After each organization has presented, we'll then go into Q&A. You've got the option to put questions in the chat, leave your cameras on and have a conversation. It really is just a very fantastic opportunity for some bespoke expertise that can be shared your way. Uh, so please do um, think of questions uh, when the time is right. And I now will um, really happily um, pass over to Angela Forbes of Buildforce. Angela. Hi there. Good morning, everyone. I will share my screen with you all. Okay. Hopefully you can see that now. So um, we do extend a warm welcome to you all. So I am Angela Forbes from Bill Force, the founder and chief exec. And with me this morning is Kathleen Cargill, so our support manager. And Kathleen also heads up our mentoring program. Um, and she's got a third hat as a military spouse. So she's juggling it all today with us. So in terms of who are Build Force, we are a construction industry program here to better support our service leavers and veterans as they transition into our sector of construction. So as you know, in industry, we've got a skills, labor and diversity, diversity shortage. And our military pool can transition into any sector they wish to when they leave. So we are competing to attract them and hence why five major contractors way back in 2011, with the support of Rebecca, created Build Force. So the aim of this program was to give greater visibility to the careers in construction and better access to our employers and to generally make the recruitment process easier for both the service leaver and our employers. So Build Force offers a wraparound support for each and every one of our service, service leavers from cradle through to grave, from them thinking about leaving the armed forces through the onboarding and beyond their probation period. So you can see here that there are four programs that sit within Build Force. Our industry program, which we'll talk through more now, and I'll welcome Kathleen just to guide us through that part. On mute would be helpful. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Kathleen, and as Angela said, I am one of the members on the support um, management for Build Force. And how we start with our candidate usually is that through an online registration via our website. Um, and the team then will contact 
the candidate um, individually for a phone call to book them in with an induction call, usually with Angela. So this call will go on for approximately 60 to 90 minutes. Um, Angela is great at um, giving a listening ear to people who are in that transition period, I guess, um, and looking to see where they might fit in within um, the construction industry. Um, following from that um, induction call, um, the candidates are sent over to either myself or my colleague Caroline, and we take them on the rest of their journey and we try and aim to mentor match them with somebody within the industry. Um, before we do that, they're offered online training with the University College of Estate Management and um, built for us have a bespoke training module with them. Um, so we offer them that option that they get to, um, I suppose, improve industry awareness and enhance their career options if they're unsure of what path they would like to take. We also have our um, mental health and well-being support with our psychologist, in-house psychologist, Bernie Graham, who offers one-to-one -one counselling and group workshops that are held twice a month. Um, it's an invaluable resource and one that we champion quite strongly within the team. Um, and it continues throughout the journey for the candidate that we offer that mental health support for them. Um, when they get to myself or Caroline, we um, look at what Angela has gone through in the induction call and mentor match them with somebody within the industry according to their skill set and their location. Sometimes it's not as easy to match them up, but um, we tend to do a wider call out in that regard and we try and get somebody who has knowledge within the industry that they're looking to get into and um, match them up, be it within six months to them leaving a year to them leaving and sometimes it's it's urgent that they're leaving within a month or two um so it's great that we have such a, a vast um team of, of mentors that we can call upon we're always looking for more so it's um it's a great opportunity if you need any more information you can always contact either myself or angela to learn more about what it means to be a mentor um, so in as as we move along, they get industry um, exposure with work placements, site visits, job interviews, um, opportunities, um, and we give them that one to one guidance throughout their their um, their transitional period. And then at, at the end, we basically continue to remain remain available once they get into employment. Um, and offer that one-to-one -one support and often we find that the candidates who do further get into industry become our mentors then because they're aware of the process and um, it's just a, a helpful um, guide for us to look back on when they when they um, get into industry. That's it for me. Perfect, thank you Kathleen. What you can see here is um, you and you'll see these and you'll hear these points a lot and you'll see this list a lot it is the transferable skills but we also need to pick on the directly relatable skills so within the royal engineers the royal electrical and mechanical um engineers the royal logistics corps these are these service leavers are trained professionals within construction and engineering um, and they have decades worth of experience within our sector they just happen to be doing it in the mod space um, and with that comes that plethora of transferable skills that you often hear about in terms of how articulate they are, effective communication skills, management and leadership. And as Kathleen had picked up on, the Bill Force team are construction professionals. So I personally was a commercial director for 23 years with global contractor Lendlease. Um, and more recently sitting as the CITB chair of the Scotland Nation Council. So fourth generation construction, it's in my blood, it's, it's what I've always done. And we're here just to make our industry a better place. And we really do believe our, our service leavers and, and veterans have got the skill set to be able to do that. So in terms of this graph, so you as employers, so over the years we've placed um, a uh, high volume of candidates, both within the consultancy and the contracting space with a wealth of different skill sets and, and seniority of, of levels. So from an employer's point of view, I'm just going to quickly talk you through what the Bill Force service would look like for, for you as an employer. Starting on number one, we'll quickly run round in terms of preparing the employer. So it's identifying the transferable skills of our armed forces and how they map across to your organisation. 
We encourage things like work placements and mentors, because if you can't quite see the fit, you will do after you've engaged with the individual and it's a try before you buy scenario. Moving on to resource based on your needs, give us early access to the rules. And we've got a database of candidates who leave up until 2024. So we can support with forecasting. And this is where the smart resource management piece kicks in. Whatever app or tool you use, it's likely that we'll have experience in it. Through to screening, implementing a CV review board to present the service lever um, with your wider HR team, explaining what he or she may have done in their military career and how it meets with that job requirement. For instance, we had an RAF corporal with a master's degree in experience in airport planning and management. He'd been applying for about 50 transport roles through jobs boards and online rejected with them all. He connected to us and within two weeks, we had five interviews for him. And we've got many, many more instances like that. So just the nuance of understanding who the individual is and what they can do and being able to just mirror that with our employers, with the over 200 employers that we work with is where our skill set sits. And again, having that personal led system and connecting the candidates is what works. It's not computer says no. Through to selection, once we really understand the business needs and the right fits, we're able to select the best candidates and ensure for review. And we can filter from 20 down to four, so whatever your um, requirements are. And then through the hiring, providing all the support to you and to the service lever, and then through to onboarding, this is the soft landing. This is the community that they need to be able to embed properly. So whether it's the mentors that we've trained up within your organization, um, or it's having counselors or support networks on the other side, it's just making sure that that individual, having been supported all the way through the transition, is supported through the onboarding process as well, just to make sure that they really land. And that helps us with this 97% um, target that we have. So 97% of all our candidates over the 12, 13 years are still in the construction industry. And it's because we are just supporting them with that eyes wide open. Do you know what you're getting into? Where are you going to best fit culturally and skill set wise? And then we're able to move on from there. Um, in terms of this next slide, so just what Build Force um, offers and the benefits, I think it's probably one of the key ones that's just kind of sticking out at me there are these insight days just at the very bottom. So essentially what this is, is for the day, we've got all our employers and all our service leavers in a room and everybody's working together. It's an opportunity to make face to face. And our last insight day um, last March was hosted by Jacobs. We were fortunate enough to have the veteran minister, Leo Doherty, there as one of our guest speakers. And Jacob's approach for the day was to have their entire HR complement in the room. Um, they saw that as a, a, a recruitment opportunity. And sure enough, they have just confirmed that over 70 individuals on that day were offered jobs and were accepted. So they'll push out social media comms for that. But that was a big opportunity for them. So again, we allow all our strategic partners to host these insight days. Our next one is in April with Mace back in London. And we'd won a couple of months ago in Manchester with the house builder Vestry. So I'll close there just to make sure that I'm kind of not overrunning on my time. And I will pass over to our next peer in this space. So I'll hand over to Andy. Thank you, Angela. Just while Andy's getting his screen ready. Wow, that stat from Jacobs is, um, that says a lot. So that was uh, really informative, really helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, Andy from Career Forces, the screen is yours. And you're on mute. So Andy. thank you. Thank you ever so much for uh, the opportunity today and for coming on on this. Um, let me just... Uh, can you see the screen okay there? Yeah, we can we can see it. It's um whatever the opposite is of the slideshow um, presentation, but we can see your slides. Okay. Yeah. That's it. So um career forces, we think we offer a unique uh, recruitment solution. We are a social enterprise. Our aims and ethos are, are on the screen there. So we're offering every UK business leader access to exceptional people 
and affordable and effective recruitment consultancy services. And we also want to make sure that every UK service person, reservist and veteran shall have access to mentoring, training and meaningful new careers. So why recruit service personnel? Well, as you've already heard, most service personnel can offer strong technical skills gained during their time in the military, and that includes project management, construction, HR, engineering, IT, and communications. So I was fortunate to serve in the Royal Engineers for 30-odd for years, which um, was a great experience and just makes me very old, but I can tell you that there's some amazing uh, skills and trades being taught in the engineers, the REMI, the signals, uh, and many other corps within the, the, the forces. These personnel offer cross-functional soft skills, including team working, motivating others, power of communication and problem solving. They're used to being tested in difficult and challenging circumstances. In general, they're mature, resilient, have proven their ability to work under pressure. They retrain easily, they're reliable, loyal, and they have a strong work ethic. We're trying to offer you a, a one-stop shop. We support veterans charities, which I'll come on to in a, in a little while. Uh, we offer a bespoke 24 seven recruitment consultancy. You can access affordable and highly effective service that creates social value at the same time. Uh, our founder and, uh, and our partners have over 45 years experience serving within the MOD. So we understand the people that we're dealing with and how to help them. We think we're uniquely placed to understand the challenges of leaving the services. We've been there and done that. And the skill sets that UK service personnel can bring to your business. Our growing partnerships offer you well-trained and reliable people. And over the last three years, since we started our social enterprise, we've supported and mentored over 900 service personnel. So our experience allows career forces to easily build trust and relationships with the service personnel and their support networks, such as the Career Transition Partnership, Armed Forces Covenant, and supporting charities. We help our candidates to decide on the next career direction. And that takes the, the form of normally a Teams meeting, uh, it's normally an hour, and before that, they'll have gone through uh, a series of advice procedures with other partners around preparing um, their CVs, how to uh, prepare themselves for interview, just generally getting them into the feel of the transition period uh, from when you come in from the military into the civilian world. The industries we support now include construction, manufacturing, logistics, healthcare and telecoms, and we're a UK wide support network. We're making our partnerships work for you. So we've built up a number of strategic partnerships that allow our clients to access a more comprehensive recruitment service. This gives the clients a diverse resource and solution, offering well-trained candidates from all areas of the British military. Our partners include the Forces Transition Group, Building People, Building Heroes, Jament Connect, and the Offsite Alliance. The process of supporting you, we advertise our clients' jobs on all the social media platforms and the Career Transition Partnership website within 24 hours of being tasked. We then carry out initial sifting and mentoring for all candidates. Once the candidate's sifting interviews are completed, we will then take them and go through their CV along with some agreed key information around their availability salary expectations and desired work patterns and locations. Only when we're happy that they know exactly the direction they would like to go, would we consider putting them forward to our candidates to be reviewed. Career Forces achieved the AFC uh, Employer Recognition Award Silver status in 21 and we support all UK service personnel and reserves. We're now in the process of applying for the uh, gold status, and we believe that the Armed Forces Covenant uh, 
is something that uh, certainly most of our clients are very supportive of. This is one of our partners, uh, Rebecca from Jement Limited. Uh, what we're trying to do here is Career Forces and, uh, and our partners are uh, for the really the, the year before people are leaving the services, we're there to, to mentor them and support them with CVs, interviews and opening up career opportunities. But we're conscious that there needs to be a through life support mechanism. So between Jement and Career Forces, we've now got uh, just uh, really as long as they need support, they can keep coming back to us. And what we're trying to do in this particular case is um, is encourage the retention within the construction industry uh, and improve the offer for the people that are going into that industry. So another new partner for the transition group, um, which we see as a, a really strong alignment where we're now um, opening up the opportunities to far more service leavers. Um, depending on the latest, uh, what stats you believe, there's around about 15,000 uh, service personnel leave the forces every year. And uh, we're, we're well placed now to, to step in and help support them. We support charities, including uh, the On Course Foundation. The On Course Foundation uses golf as a medium to, to help uh, service personnel, injured service personnel. Uh, last year, they delivered 47 events with an attendance of over 600. And Career Forces hosted a, uh, a Veterans Golf Day in Newbury back in July of 2022, where we had uh, uh, eight injured veterans where we we supported them throughout the day we're going to and and the picture on the screen now is of those some of those veterans that benefited from that day we're going to uh, replicate that this year um, on the 14th of July so if any of you are interested in that there are still tickets available the idea is that uh, business uh, buy a ticket for two uh, two people around the golf and then they're drawn and they play in a team with two of the injured veterans. Combat Stress is another charity that we've adopted uh, and on the screen are just some of the uh, amazing things that Combat Stress do for, for our service personnel. We see them as another key charity and this year we're doing uh, a March in March for them. Again, uh, that's something that you can join if you'd wish to. Uh, the link is on the screen as we talk. The idea there is we're going to take part in a series of events during March and raise as much money as we can for the charity. So this all feeds into the, the social value that we're trying to bring to the recruitment process. We think, well, we know we support exceptional personnel, uh, no more so probably than Harry Boodle and Magar. Uh, Harry lost both legs in an IED um, incident in Afghanistan and he's now this year about to try and conquer Mount Everest um, and be the, the first double uh, amputee above the knee to do that. So just to reiterate every UK veteran and key worker shall have access to new careers. Every business leader has access to exceptional personnel. We're run by veterans, for veterans, and we believe in supporting those that have served. So in summary, by using our services, you're creating social value, gaining access to thousands of incredible people every year, and helping UK service personnel, reservists, and veterans charities. Our partnerships offer you a unique recruitment consultancy. We're scalable, effective, and affordable, and we welcome the opportunity to support you. And that's, uh, that's all from Career Forces. Thank you very much for your time today. And I think we're going to do uh, questions a bit later on. We are indeed. Uh, Andy, thank you very much. Whilst we just wait for um, Karen, who's next up in Building Heroes, to share her screen, uh, I'll just say thank you. But also, um, that's another 
interesting stat that um, 71 percent leave the construction industry after only three months so I think the support you're talking about in the mentoring um, that both you and Angela have referenced is absolutely vital uh, Karen great we can see your screen you might want to put it on um, slide sharing mode or whatever the correct language is but um, the screen is there and I'm going to hand over to you with a, a big welcome to Karen Jefford who's the CEO of Building Heroes thank you Karen I think if you do top left from beginning, that would um, work. Cool. There we go. All Are we on. live? Can you see my screen, everyone? We yeah, can indeed. Can. Okay, good stuff. Um, afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks. Um, thankfully, the M25 and M1 was very kind to me. Uh, this morning, I'm up at our on-site academy in um, Ibstock in the Midlands. Uh, and joining me, and you you have to forgive me, I wasn't being rude, but Angela, Andrew, we were just kind of conferring with some of the things that you were feeding back and the challenges that military have in being recruited. And I've got two candidates that are currently in training with Building Heroes at the moment who are going to chat and we we're just, you know, kind of correlating their experiences with some of the things you were saying. Um, so, uh, yeah, we were engaging in your conversation, but in, in a mute mode. Um, I think what's really important to the audience listening today is um, that our three organisations can provide a solution to you as a, an organisation, but also to industry. Uh, and the three of us work in collaboration. So the three of us, you know, we're our own forces united. So um, yeah, it couldn't be better to have all three of us working together. So thanks, Rebecca, for bringing us all online this morning. So um, I'm Karen Jefford, uh, Chief Executive for Building Heroes. Um, I could talk to, to England about Building Heroes, but I'm going to do my slides really very quickly because I think who better to hear from those that are in training uh, and potentially your, your recruits for the industry. Um, so Building Heroes is a charity. We've been operating for eight years um, and we're dedicated to supporting service leavers, reservists, military family um, and our veterans, but also other underrepresented groups to transition into construction. And we do that by delivering a course that's funded, you know, the charity raise funding to deliver our training to enable them to have a second career and, and we feel that their transferable skills correlate with those that are needed in the construction industry. Last year, Building Heroes were awarded the Queen's Award for Enterprise um, and that really just rubber stamped the work that we're doing to help the military transition, but also our support of, of the construction industry. Building Heroes now are working in 14 different locations around the country in England and the south of Wales. Um, and we're delivering anything from um, construction skills um, to engineering, groundworks, plants, and also um, CSCS card and, and health and safety. So when our candidates have gone through our training, they are actually work ready. They're entry route, but they're work ready candidates. Our unique uh, recruit, reskill, redeploy model um, is unique in our ability to deliver recognized qualifications. But as I said, um, they need to outcomes within five weeks. The employers that we work with within our five week program are coming in, they're engaging with our learners. And at the end of five weeks, in most cases, they're actually being issued contracts that on that following Monday, that sixth week, they're actually um, uh, going into employment. So Building Heroes, actually, COVID was a blessing for Building Heroes as a charity. You wouldn't you know, expect to hear that, um, but that was the fast track of something that we were doing behind the scenes. So Building Heroes have taken their training from what was traditionally um, working in collaboration, and we still continue to work in collaboration with education. We've lifted what was our workshop delivery onto on-site. So we're immersing ourselves into the world of construction. We're working with all those tier one contractors and their supply train to give you solutions to those skill shortages. So um, what we're doing is we're providing our skills training within the heart of the development. We're following the life cycle of the build. So obviously any build starts with foundation. We might be delivering a, a range of courses for groundworks. We'll follow with um, construction skills. And our newest qualification is the built environment. We under understand the needs of the challenges within industry. And some of those challenges are finding those project management, those quantity surveyors and those um, site managers. Within our five week program, we do site intervention. Um, so site intervention includes a couple of things. It's actually looking at foundation to final build. We're working with all the different trade areas. 
but we're also looking at your health and safety teams, but also your HR teams. You know, where are your pain points? We want to understand where they are and we want to be able to help you to fill those gaps so that, you know, the industry has got that flow of regular um, solid um, candidates to go into your industry. The idea of the on-site academies also is we, we know that one of your biggest challenge is, you know, social value, evidence in that social value. And the idea of on-site is local people, local training, local outcomes. So the candidates that we have, you know, they might be serving in Catterick in the north, but home might be down in Wiltshire. Absolutely right that we accommodate them in a course in Wiltshire, because then we give them the introduction to those employers with a view that there is that job outcome. And that's the goal for building here is that we do provide that outcome for the learner. So I mentioned I was on site today and I had hoped that our, our, our on site partner at Davison's was going to be with us. But Fran, unfortunately, um, had a, a pressing commitment that she couldn't take herself away from. Um, but we we partnered with um, Davison's back in 2021. Um, and this was our very first on site academy, you know, post COVID. Um, and the reason we did that was to strengthen our, our relationship with industry and the construction, well, the construction industry, really. Um, and from every course, Davison's have been able to recruit our learners. But what was really telling when we worked in partnership with them is although we were delivering the trade skills, they identified that our learners had professional skills that they could bring to their organisation. So we developed a, a build, don't buy your organisation. So, you know, you might have a skills gap within, um, you know, your, your company. D you know, when you're thinking about a military person, they bring a plethora of other skill sets. And that was identified by uh, Davison's. And so whilst they recruited an individual for the role, they saw the worth of the other skills that they were bringing and actually are, are providing career paths for those individuals. So they're not just coming in just to be a job role. We know that within the military, they're encouraged to progress. And so we've adopted that same thing with our employers to actually, you know, I've got um, Sean and Hattie with me today. So we're encouraging the employers that they go to. Don't just let them sit, you know, in that particular role and become stagnant. They want to progress. They want to earn their salaries and they want to do well within the industry as well. Um, so we've started with Davison's to look at some professional trade skills as well um, with them. So look, I'm going to hand over to um, Hattie and Sean, you know, who better to sell their stories of what they can bring to industry, um, what they're enjoying about the course uh, and what life looks like after building here is. I think we're, we're just about week five, we're, we're in the final three days. So I'm going to hand over to, to Hattie and then Sean to tell, you know, to introduce themselves. I'm Hattie, um, I'm looking to go into construction, into a oil and tools job. So um, I applied for this course. Two reasons I applied for this course mainly, the first being that um, on all the job applications I was finding through normal application processes, they had a minimum of having your CSCS card and your health and safety, just minimum things where I literally wasn't going to get my CV looked at at all. So that was one thing that I could take off from coming to this course. Um, I could gain that immediately in an environment where they know that that's what I'm coming to do. I also came on here because it's such a multi-skilled course and we're doing so many different things is I could possibly find something that I'm really good at and then be able to um, expand on that or be able to go to someone and say, oh, I'm, I'm really into tiling. I'm really, really good at that. So, um, yeah, I think the course has been really valuable on that front as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's been a five week course. I'm looking for different jobs in the in the construction industry. I'm hoping that this qualification can get me my CV noticed a little bit more because I'm retrading into something else. Uh, so I'm starting right from the bottom. Brilliant. Thank you, Hattie. Um, Sean, tell yes. us your story. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. My name is Sean, and um, I served 22 years in the Army. I left 17 years ago, immediately went to the police. I'm due to retire from the police in two months' time. Uh, I always considered myself as being a competent DIYer, but uh, I always wanted to start my own business as a, uh, a maintenance engineer, really doing property so um i didn't know where to start 
as I say, I didn't understand competence and confidence until I started this course and did all of the training which they offer from bricklaying right up to, um, to, to woodwork and painting and decorating. So now we're in the last three days um, and albeit my, my business is sort of ready to go, um, I'm able to go out now with the confidence and both the competence to uh, to go out and do exactly what I've been trained to do. And without this course, I wouldn't actually have been able to do any of that. So a big thank you to uh, to the, the recommendations and the help I've had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean and Hattie. You know, who, as I said, who, who more valuable than speak to the learners, you know, their experiences. Angela, you said yourself, you know, someone can send out a load of CVs and they're being missed out of these automated processes. Organisations are losing valuable skills from these service leaders. You know, they, they add serious value to organisations. And I think, you know, whether you're looking for a skilled person, you know, experienced in engineering, in logistics, project management, administration, you know, military are likely to have the skills associated with all of those all of those roles. So, you know, when we partner with our on-site partners and, you know, they range from, you know, Fish Street to Cost Lane, so house builders, road builders, um, property developers, you know, they are looking uh, for the longevity, you know, the biggest and the hardest, most expensive thing is recruitment. You know, having a building here is on site every five weeks, you've got that access to, you know, those valuable individuals. But, you know, it helps really um, drive improvements. It helps with reskilling existing staff, upskilling staff, um, but also, and more importantly for us, you know, um, God forbid, you know, we enter a landscape where our service leavers more and more becoming unemployed. You know, we can bridge that gap. We can stop that from happening. Um, and industry can add valuable skill sets um, to their organisations. Um, so we know that industry is lacking in skills, um, you know, partners willing to, you know, partner with us um, and, and host our groundbreaking training academies will have the success of, of these valuable recruits. Um, look, I could talk forever about how amazing these people are. I come to our, like, our you know, our on-site centres. I'm in awe, you know, the storytelling. I mean, what Tati didn't tell you, <laughs> Tati, I hope I'm not going to share some major story here, but, you know, she started off as a ballerina and, you know, she served in the military uh, and bless her, she still, you know, what do we call spring art? You keep going, can't you? Look, these people need a job. And look, organisations, you couldn't pick, you know, better individuals to join your, you know, your companies. Um, so there you go. Look, that's me, Karen Jefford from Building Heroes. Thank you very much.